All right. We're in a series called Be Bold. Someone say, Be Bold. Be strong. strong. Our scripture for our series is out of Joshua 1 and 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Can you say amen? Today we look at another person God used boldly and courageously to fulfill his destiny. I've entitled this message, In the Grip of the Gale, God is Still Good. Now that's not Gail Combs. That's G-L-A-L-E. Come on. In the grip of the gale, God is still good. Look at your neighbor and say, God is still good. Yes, he is. Our story of reference is Acts 27. You don't have to turn there because I'm going to start shuffling the cards all the way through there. Before we pray, Acts 27 and 25. So take courage for I believe God, Paul said to a group of people that were in the grip of a gale. It will be just as he said. And I think the anchor of his life is found in 2 Timothy 1 and 13. I know, someone say, I know. I know in whom I have believed in. I know the one in whom I trust in. I know the one I have put my confidence in, that he is able to keep that, to preserve that, which I have committed to him. Can I get an amen? Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Speak through your servant. Let me serve you by delivering the word. Whisper into the ears of my brothers and sisters even what I do not say. Speak, Spirit of the Lord. Do what you do so powerfully. We welcome you to the glory of the Father and in the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. In Acts 27, Paul's in a place that he doesn't necessarily want to be. He's a prisoner of Rome on a ship headed to Rome to stand trial for preaching the gospel of Jesus. Aren't you glad today that you aren't in fear in America of preaching Jesus? Come on, somebody. He's on a ship with other prisoners and soldiers, and he's right in the middle of God using him in his circumstances. And you, in the grip of the gale, are right in the middle of God using you in the midst of your circumstance. Can I get an amen? And all of a sudden, contrary winds begin to blow against this ship contrary in the dictionary according to Alexa my friend is the opposite in nature or character the opposite contrary winds are pushing against the ship contrary people anybody dealt with some contrary people this week Oh, my, I hope they're not sitting by you this morning contrary winds and in the grip of a gale things are going on and to the casual observer, Acts 27 reads like a cinematic tale written by Spielberg or Denzel or some of the other great directors. But it's written, my God, can I get an amen? Paul remains bold and confident. He became confident in the midst of what was going on. And I believe it's because he knew in whom he had believed in. Anybody believe in your God today? And he was persuaded that that which he committed this morning, the Lord is going to push you to commit some new things to him that might be weighing you down. I'm sure you can relate to contrary winds. You're trying to move forward in your life, but contrary winds keep coming against you. Can I get an amen? You're trying to get out of debt, but all of a sudden your appliances come into unity with each other and say, not just one of us is going to break down. Make sure it's at least two of us at the same time. If you've got one, more than one car, your one car will say to another car, hey, you let the oil go out and the brakes will go out on me. Let's have a good time. Contrary winds. Can I get an amen? Maybe you're trying to build a business and contrary winds. Maybe you're trying to take a step towards your future. And contrary winds keep blowing you off your course. Maybe you're trying to lead a loved one to Jesus and contrary winds keep coming against you. Resistance. Someone say resistance. Maybe you're trying to make changes in your life and get rid of your hurts and habits and hang up in our recovery community. But contrary winds, so many people we've walked through recovery, it'll be past due fines. It'll be convincing parole officers that they found a new day. I believe that when Jesus said, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. And regardless of contrary winds, God can recover all. Can I get an amen? Can you give him praise? 
days. Maybe you're trying to walk in the fullness of what he called you to be. But contrary winds. You're trying to get ahead of attack, but contrary winds. That's where Paul was. Paul said, I know in whom I believed in. And in case you forgot, God is big, so you don't have to be. Can I get an amen? God is super big today. And when you greet someone, Miss Pam, they say, how are you? And you say, fine, thank you. Or you're honest and say, it's a horrible day. But anyway, I'm fine. That'll really shock them. Try that next time. And then say, but I know a man. And then just start preaching. But come on. You say to someone, how are you? And people will say, how is God? Well, I'll tell you today, God is doing mighty fine today. He is doing mighty fine. He's bigger and more massive than our wildest imagination. He's doing good, holding galaxies together and stars in place. He is seemingly controlling the chaotic events of politics even now God is doing well and guess what he has no dilemmas can I get an amen no quandaries no counselors no shortages he has no cracks no worries he has no fears today can I get an amen he is self-existent self-contained self-perpetuated self-powered and self-aware in other words God is God and he knows it somebody give him a shout of praise this morning God is God and he knows it. Regardless of what contrary winds come politically, economically, financially, in our culture, our anchor is in Christ and God who is on the throne. Hold fast, don't relent. We must know who we have believed in and persuaded that he is able. You might have many things in your life that are of value, maybe silver, maybe gold, I don't know, maybe money, maybe the tires on your car, I think that's very valuable. Maybe the oil change you had, I just think that's pretty valuable. That dishwasher I have, I think it's up to $800 now, the repairmen keep coming out. But you think these things are valuable but nothing is as valuable than your confidence in who you have believed in and that you are committed that he is able somebody give him a praise when we were evangelists, Brother Gerald, I used to sing before my husband preached. Oh, Pammy, those were the days. Traveling in car, we'd cross Perry and Pam on the way east, way west. And I used to sing with my little soundtrack back when dinosaurs roamed the earth and we all rode horseback. Come on, somebody. And there was a song I loved to sing. It was written by Candy Hemphill, who's now Candy Christmas, who you probably know because of Kent Christmas in Nashville. But it says, <laughs> I know the master of the wind. I know the maker of the rain. He can calm the storm, make the sun shine again. I know the master of the wind. Aren't you glad this morning that you know the master of the wind? Hallelujah. But the Lord allows us snapshots of people's lives, David. Chapters in the Bible, we see their troubles, their victories, their failures, their battles. They're like us. And God is favoring us by not sugarcoating their life. He loves us enough to show us what's really happening in this situation. But if you just took a snapshot, if you just took a day, if you just took a sh chapter out of their life or your life, you might misjudge God's goodness. If you just take one moment of this story, you think, where is God? You take just one moment of your life, one day. We've all had those days. We've had weeks. We've had months. And if you judge God on that, you have to give God time to make sense out of what does not make sense. You can't judge it. God does not promise you and I a life of ease, but he does promise a life of deliverance. Isn't that mighty? For Psalms 34, many are the afflictions and the trouble of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all. Someone say all. He delivers us from all fears. That means the totality of fear, any shape, size, and form of fear, God can deliver us because we know who we have believed in. In, and we are able that he we are convinced that he is able can you say amen and give him a shout of praise and God gives us a glimpse of Apostle Paul's life who finds himself in the grip of a gale g-a-l-e strong wind strong wind we see his faith and we know the final outcome and we understand why he says to us I know whom I have believed in and I'm persuaded 
You see, this morning, I loved hearing you worship. Oh, my goodness. I'm always so excited to get to church. Pastor Barb, except I remember I'm the one preaching. <laughs> I was like, I can't wait to tomorrow. I go, you're preaching. Oh, okay. But I can't wait to get in here and hear you praise him and worship him. Your hallelujah is strong. Your praise is powerful. Your God has been so good to me. You're shouting in here. You're singing in here. You're part of the legacy of the living room of faith in here. And that God inhabits his praise, but we don't always know the circumstance for why you're praising him we know you're biblically praising him because we've been taught to praise him because he is worthy can I get an amen in the darkest night one of my favorite Mav songs when the doctor was by my bed he was worthy he was worthy so powerful but you've been taught praise but when you get specific like Paul does and you share what he's brought you through when you share the things he brought you through then we understand what a literary term called the prefigure the uh, narration of your dramatic praise you take us back when you say I'm going to tell you why I'm praising him come on somebody you take us back when you tell us why you never lost your praise that's why this church loves testimonies and we will always have testimonies can you say amen we'll never get too big that a testimony can't be told in fact today Wendy Miller is she still here with us or did she have to go Wendy stand up this is Wendy who's been in the hospital for five days is in recovery all things they found wrong with her but she got released and we're believing God for total healing somebody give him praise this morning she was an alcoholic. First day I met her at Hope House, she was shaking so bad she couldn't hardly move. We prayed for her. Perry and Pam prayed for her. Other people prayed for her. And I saw the shaking from complete alcoholism leave her. And she's come too far to turn back now. She's come too far to turn back now. She's got a story to tell. She's got a witness to give. And we love it when we hear your story. Someone give God praise. Thank you, Wendy. You take us back to why you didn't leave the Lord and what he did for you. Give us the behind scene of the trial you went through. You give us the backstory to the storm. And then we see it in like perfect cinematology. Um, that's the, I'm saying that wrong, but you fill in the blanks. We see it and we feel it. And then we understand when you share. It's like the psalmist said, I cried out to the Lord in my distress. My delivering God heard my troubling cry. My sobs came right up at his heart, the psalmist said. And he turned his face to rescue me has the Lord ever turned his face to rescue anyone in the room has the, has the Lord ever answered in the midnight hour give him a shout of praise in this house I love this. The Lamentations says in 355, I called on your name, Lord. I thought I would perish. But Lord, from the depths of the very pit, I called on you. And this is why I praise you. You heard my plea. You came near when I called you. You said, do not fear. Oh, Lord, you redeemed my life. Has the Lord redeemed anyone in the room this morning? Has the Lord redeemed anyone in the room? Take Take a five second break and praise him for it this morning. Take a five second break and glorify him for it. The storm may have blown you, but it will bring you to a good point. It didn't come to destroy you, but to build your faith, that trial, that hard place. There's a song I love. I didn't discover it until this last year. It was written in 2018. I won't try to, I won't try to sing this, but it's by Jonathan uh, Mac Mac Reynolds, And it says, may your struggles keep you near the cross and may your troubles show you that you need God and may your bad days prove that God is good and may your whole life prove to the whole world that God is good at the end of your life at the end of my grandparents life at the end of my great grandparents life who put their trust in the Lord we stood around their ending days and we didn't remember their mistakes we didn't remember their failures we didn't even remember their accomplishments Accomplishments. What we remembered, their life proved that in the grip of a gale, God is still good. At the end of your life, they're going to say, God was good to Mish. God was good to Sonia. God was good to them. Somebody praise him this morning. 
And Paul on this ship says to the people on there, and I was going to tell you that I was going to end with who the Lord heals through this, but that's next week. The Lord divided that. And you should just give him praise right now because that shortened this message from five hours to one. <laughs> I said, are you sure, Lord? Paul said, I believe there's great trouble ahead of us. And if you continue on the route you're going on these seas and all the things that are going on, you're going to hit some bad stuff. I don't know about you, but I regret every time I pushed past the peace of what the Word of God said I was supposed to do. I regret every time I pushed past the peace of my mentors. I pushed past the peace of those that were ahead of me, of my parents. Sometimes we don't want to listen to warning because we don't want to face the sorrow of letting go of something we don't want to let go of. But I'm going to tell you the sorrow in the end is worse than what you temporarily go through. We're struggling sometimes to listen. Paul, Paul had warned them. He had said this is a yield sign. Don't keep going. But the officer in charge listened more to him than the captain on the ship or listen more to the captain than him so they kept on going look at your neighbor and say sometimes you need to go another way you see sometimes we're sailing straight toward a disaster or negative and a mentor or a pastor or a brother sister in the Lord says I think you're going the wrong way but we say no I want what I want me wants what I want me needs what I need I mean I can't change it's too late for me to change well I don't know that you are above the scripture that says that Jesus can change everything that anyone the new creature is new in Christ it's never too late to change it's never too late to become what God called you to be. Give him a shout of praise. And this interesting thing, so they kept going headlong and it got worse. Then it got so bad that the sailors, verse 20, I think we have you. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, when they had let down the skiff, which is lifeboat, everyone say lifeboat, into the sea under the pretense, that means they pretended, of putting out anchors from the pow. What does that mean? Look up here just a minute. It means this. They pretended that they were anchoring themselves like the word of God had said. But instead, they were putting out a lifeboat saying, I'm out of here. This is my escape route. You ever been there? Paul said, unless all, and we'll get to more than that just a minute. Paul said, unless everyone stays on the ship, they will be destroyed and he knew the lifeboat had gone out there. And so what they did is, then the sailors cut the rope from the skiff, the light ball, light boat. Everyone say lifeboat. And let it fall. What does that mean? Sometimes you've got to have courage to cut some things out of your life and cut the ropes on some things that you're holding on to that are keep you from going higher in the Lord. The most powerful sales pitch in the history of America came in 1883 at the biggest World's Fair at the latest and greatest inventions. A man named Elisha Otis, say I'll never forget, Elisha Otis. He made the most remarkable sales pitch. He got all these people in a large room. He put a huge platform like an elevator. He lowered it from the ceiling, and he stood on it. The reason he did, he'd invented a safety break. At that time, full, uh, skyscrapers weren't skyscrapers. They could only go up five floors because nobody, come on somebody, wanted to climb more than five flights of stairs. Can I get an amen? We're in New York City on a vacation in 2005 with Courtney, and uh, we were going to go Broadway that night, and I went and ran on the treadmill for an hour, and then everything went out in this tall, high-rise at Times Square, and everybody was, and I had to get back in there and get my, my hair done and get my outfit on and get pretty for my husband and my people so I could go to the thing, and I thought, what am I going to do? And these college-aid girls said, let's go this way, and I said, they're in college, they're smart. I'm going to follow them. Well, unbeknown to me, they decided we would run run up 20 flights of stairs and about halfway when I thought I was going to die and I was breathing like I needed CPR I realized that they were a basketball team that I was following up the stairs come on somebody but I said, this 45-year-old, hell of freeze over. I let them know I'm about to die back here. And I found, when I got to my floor, I said, thanks. Huh? When I got to the room, open up, I'm going to die. Open up, I'm going to die. But this time, nobody wanted to go upstairs. So this Elisha Otis, what a great name. He does this, and he builds it up high. And he says to the great crowd, I have a man with an axe on the side. And when I yell to him to cut the rope, he's going to cut the rope. Everyone, ooh. He's going to cut the rope. 
People began to scream because then he yelled, cut the rope. And when he did, this thing began to drop fast and furious all the way down and people were screaming and running out of the room and then all of a sudden he pulled his safety brake and when he did he landed safely and then everybody said oh that is awesome in that like moments in your life we're going to show you a picture of that very scene in that like moments in your life there it is people say oh that's terrible he's never getting through that and they're like oh glory to God he got through that Oh, that's horrible what she's going to do. Oh, that'll never work. That'll never work. I don't know why they think she's going to help them. They think it's a whosoever thing. Well, don't you know there's exclusions? There's no exclusions to whosoever, but I'll let that go. But at any rate, don't you think? And then they're thrilled. But what he did in that moment, then they began to scream with joy. And suddenly he yelled out, everyone is safe. I have pulled this off. In that time, only five floors. But in 1854, they installed the first elever, elever, <laughs> elevator in a building on Broadway. And the rest is history. Next time you go up an elevator on 45 floors, you give God and Elisha Ode. This praise. Come on. By 1890, I'm going somewhere with this. Buildings were taller than 10 stories. By 1900, 65 buildings were taller than 20 stories. By 1908, there were 538 that were um, categorized as skyscrapers. You see, the more and more buildings got taller because one man had the courage to cut the rope. There was a height that they could go because one person had the courage to cut the rope. Now the world's population goes through, I want to give you all the stats, it's long, New York City, that company is still operating today. I wonder this morning what you and I are holding on to, what rope we need to cut. What rope is holding us down that's keeping us from going as high as we need to go. In 1997, we used to sing a song. It's called, I Will Never Be the Same Again. I'm not going to sing it. It says, there are higher heights and there are deeper seas. Whatever you need to do, Lord, do it in me. I want the glory of God in my life. I don't ever want to be the same again. Sweep away the darkness. Burn away the chaff. Flow like mighty waters because I want to glorify your name. I will never return. I've closed the door. I will walk the path. I will run the race. I will never be the same again. There comes a moment that we have to make a decision. I'm cutting the rope to ever going back to what I knew and I'm going forward in Jesus. Someone give him a shout of praise. The Spanish expedition led by Hernan Cortez in 1519 to discover Mexico. The crew was weary crossing the sea. And what he did is, he said, I want you to burn these ships. He didn't burn the ships. He drowned them because what he was saying is, there's no plan B. I want to say to you and I this morning, in order to achieve our destiny and our purpose, we need to cut the rope on some things. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a plan B. I love this story. I asked this. No one is even in this vicinity anymore, but I did ask permission. I was counseling and marriage counseling. My husband and I one time, and the wife looked at her husband, looked at us, and she goes, I'm going to tell you he's a chump, but he's my chump, and I'm staying with him. And he said, I want to tell you she's difficult. She's as hard-crusted as overburnt cornbread. And sometimes she reminds me of the biggest redneck I've ever met, but she's my redneck. And I'm staying with her. You can't change the past. But in the present, in your marriage, you cut the rope. And you say, there is no plan B. Alternative option is not what I'm thinking. I'm going all the way. Somebody give God a shout of praise. <laughs> Declare the alternative is not an option. Cut the rope. Burn away some of the thoughts in your mind. The alternative plan. Cut the rope and let go of some things in your heart, the bitterness and rejection. Cut the rope to bitterness and rejection. Cut the rope and stop feeding the thoughts that are contrary to the Lord. Cut the rope on too much internet, alcoholism, insecurity, conduct, shame, guilt from the past, rejection and fear. You wonder why the enemy bullies you so much about who you are? Because he does not want you to take your destiny. He does not want you. He comes to steal First, he steals your peace, your joy, your confidence. 
Once he's done that, he comes in to kill your hope of going to the future. Once he's done that, he destroys the destiny that God has called you to walk in. We need to cancel the lifeboat. We need to cancel plan B. We need to get the foot out of the lifeboat. You that are in recovery, you don't need to say, well, I know something I'm working on the side. I can get a little something, something. If this recovery thing doesn't work, I'll go the way. No, you burn the ships. You cut the rope. And you say, regardless of the pain, I'm going to be clean. I'm going to be free. In Jesus' name, somebody give him a shout of praise. <laughs> Cancel. If this doesn't work out, I'm going to do something else. And say, I'm going all the way. We used to sing a song. Pammy, you remember? We still sing it, but I have decided. We got a round going, but it's good. <laughs> to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, turning back. It goes on. At some moment, you have to say to yourself, you have to say to the things in your life, I have decided I'm not turning around. I'm not going back. There is no other option. I miss the evangelistic days, years when we were all young, and I'd be staying in a room with hundreds and hundreds of people after the end of my husband's message and hear hundreds of youth. And hundreds of people sing in one voice, I have decided to follow Jesus and to know that generations were changing. Other people will be encouraged if you have the courage to say, Lord, help me to cut the rope on anything that's holding me down. Help me to get my foot out of plan B lifeboats and burn the ships and say, I'm going forward all the way with Jesus. Somebody praise him. And the weather abruptly changed and Nor'easton came. In the grip of the gale, one translation says, things got worse. And it says this, it got so bad that it was blocking out the sun and the stars, Paul writes. When at last, I'll hope that we would be saved, would be gone. Mike, if you'd come help me on the keyboards and I'll pull the other musicians up in a minute. When all hope was gone, I'm not quite there, there yet, so Steve, hang with me, people, as he plays. You know, I know there's been moments in your life when a, not maybe a storm didn't rage, but circumstances raged. Can I get an amen? When fears raged, when doubt raged. I'm never surprised how the enemy comes to push people back out of their destiny because he does it to me. All the years of ministry, and I'm not going to list all the things, and all the people I'm blessed to travel with and know, household names and unknown names. Unknown names even mean more to me at times. But I'm going to tell you, the sun can seem blotted out. The stars can be blotted out and things just seem to rage. But someone on the ship, somebody say someone on the ship, got a word that encouraged them. The word can come alive in you to encourage those around you. The things of God can come alive in you. This morning we've tried to awaken the things of God in you. The goodness of God can come alive in you. In the grip of a gale, you can say to others, God is still good. He's going to get you through this. He's going to make a way where there is no way. You can be like the Apostle Paul with a word this week for someone. The scripture goes on and Paul says to them, he says, For last night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood by me. Someone say, he stood by me. And he said, don't be afraid, Paul, for you're going to go to Rome. You're going to stand trial. But what's more, Paul says, this is so powerful. This, oh, I could just preach one message right here, but I can't. God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone. You know, there's some people in your life that God is just granting a little bit of goodness to because you're still in their life saying things. And don't ever doubt that. Do you hear me by the word of the Lord? Don't ever doubt that your influence is not doing something. I love that Paul said he's stupid. And I love that he says in 2 Timothy 4 and 16, I at first, there was no one I could count on to stand with me. They all ran off and abandoned me. But don't hold it against them. Don't you love that? He says, forgive them. You know, there's not really who cares. You know, you just need to forgive someone who didn't stood with you, who didn't stand with you, who left you when they should have stood with you. Or maybe you felt like they did, they didn't. Because it is the Lord himself who stands with you. He said, in spite of this, the Lord himself stood with me, encouraging me to complete my purpose, and all glory will go to him alone 
forever and ever. Don't you love it that the God often pulls back the curtain and he allows us to see some drama. And it pales in comparison to the drama we can't see around us. He lets us see Paul saying an angel appeared to him. Well, Pastor Rhonda, I've never seen an angel. That's okay. But the Lord has stood with you. You see, he pulls back the curtain to allow you to see a snapshot. And Paul says, the Lord himself stood with me. And he, he strengthened me. Has anybody ever felt in a moment that the Lord stood with you? And the Lord strengthened you. Somebody give him a praise this morning. Jesus is the one who does when no one else can do it. Jesus stood with you. Someday you'll see on a big screen all the moments of your life. It'll be on a huge screen, even bigger than what OCI has, which I think is the most fabulous screen. But it'll be a big screen. The Lord will show you the moments of heartbreak, devastation, despair moments. When you called someone and they encouraged you, but then that phone call ended. And you're all alone again, but he stood with you. The moments that you cried yourself to sleep and woke up and you didn't have any peace, but you woke up in peace. Make no mistake, in the night, Christ stood with you. Maybe you had a burden that was overwhelming and you said, it's too much. I feel like the weight of the world is on my shoulders. It's too much. But then you found a reprieve. Make no mistake, Jesus stood with you. Just maybe the times that you felt misunderstood. Maybe you weren't, but that was your perception. So we'll give you that. But Jesus stood with you. He defended you. He fought for you. Psalms 28 and 7, a parishioner texted me yesterday. And immediately the Lord gave me the scripture. I went to find it. And I want to pull it in today. They had a need. And I said, this is the scripture the Lord gives you. Psalms 28 and 7 says, he is your strength. He is your impenetrable shield. The Passion Translation says, He is your wraparound. Someone say wraparound. God takes care of the helpless. Psalms 116. When I was at the end of my rope, He saved me. Psalms 34 and 22 says, The Lord redeems His servants. No one who runs to Him will ever lose out. Can you give Him a praise? I want to say to you this morning, I want to say to those who have been strong for everyone else, I want to say to those who wish you weren't in charge. Remember when you had five, you just wanted to be in charge? Just give me a puppy, mommy, because I can boss that puppy around. And then you became in charge. I wish I was five. I want to say to those in this room, which is everyone who's been strong for everyone else, I want to say to the head of households in this room, Jesus stands with you. I want to say to the parents in this room, Jesus stands with you. I want to say to the single moms and the single dads, Jesus himself stands with you. I want to say to those facing a heavy crisis, Jesus stands with you. I want to say to those facing a health crisis, Jesus stands with you. I want to say to young adults at the crossroads of life, Jesus stands with you. I want to say to the teenagers facing peer pressure or you're just confused about who you are, Jesus stands with you. I want to say to the children (laughs) of aging parents and the children, adult children that don't have any parents living anymore. Jesus stands with you. You are never alone. You are never alone. To the business owner trying to pay the bills and you feel the pressure of doing your best, Jesus stands with you. And to every grieving spouse in this room, that journey I know, Jesus himself stands with you. Jesus, the creator, the sustainer, the redeemer, the owner of the universe, the one who created all things, the king of kings and the Lord of lords and the name above all names. He stands with you. Can you give him praise this morning? Just lift a hand and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Other musicians, join us, please. I love you, Jesus. He stands with you. 
I sought the Lord and he heard me. It's not beyond him, it may be beyond me. Let me tell you about the Jesus you serve. I have a scissors and rope, I didn't cut it. I'll do it afterwards and just know I'm gonna cut that rope when you're gone, okay? I wanna tell you about Jesus. You can be successful and triumphant. <laughs> Produce and deliver and accumulate all the wealth of the world. Earn respect from peers and their applause. Surround yourself with loyal admirers. Check social media platforms for likes and comments. You can climb the highest mountain on the earth and look out upon the horizon. You can stand on the crashing surf and take in the roar of the sea. You can stroll beneath the shadows of masterfully created skyscrapers. Partake of the amenities of a metropolitan city. Go into museums and see the greatest works of art by Monet and others. You can see sculptures created by humans that are almost heavenly. But none of it, none of it will feel the entire heart. All of the above is beautiful and delightful and valuable and admirable. Will not feel the God-shaped vacuum in your heart. There is only one and his name is Jesus. You can sit at the table of life and people admire you. You can have all pursuits in the world, but it again, I've sat with some who have acclaimed this that don't know him. It will leave you lacking. It will leave you without. There's only one who will satisfy your deepest longings. Only one who will fill every crevice of your heart. Only one who will end your wondering. Only one who will satisfy your longing. Only one applause that can squelch your insecurity. Only one one affirmation can cease your striving. Only one side can take your breath away and then put it back to you. And it is Jesus. He is enough this morning to lift your head, to remind you of your worth, to rescue you from your despair, to cure what ails you, to recover what's been stolen, to wipe away the tears, to redeem every pain, to give you back the laughter. Here it is. Everything and everyone is deficient. But Jesus, he is enough. To the downtrodden, the forgotten, the abandoned, the wounded, the sorrowful, the strong, the weak, the generals and the new Christians. To those in need, to the rebel they say is beyond repair. And he's not. Jesus is enough. Enough to heal your emotions, eradicate your fear, answer your questions. Only one can forgive your sin, make every right and wrong. So Jesus, we say to you today, you are enough. You are everything in the grip of the gale. I know in whom I have believed in. And I am persuaded that he is able. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Somebody give him a shout of praise in this room. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the scripture says, And as the day was about to dawn, that Temecula, which we'll get to next week, of who you're going to heal now that you've come through what you have, how God uses your pain for his glory. How not to let the venom of things in the world get into your bloodstream. Paul urged everyone to eat on the ship. He said, you've not eaten for 14 days. You've been so worried. I wonder what the Lord would say to you and I this morning. Child, you've been staying up in the middle of the night worrying. Child, you've been rising up early fretting. Child, you've been carrying the cares of the world all around you. You keep praising me, but that thing keeps rearing its ugly head and says bow down and you do you need to receive nourishment from me this morning the word that's gone forth he's given you nourishment in the worship he's saying to you this morning let me handle the breakthrough that I promised let me fulfill what I promised let me restore what you categorize unrestorable. Let me heal what you think is unhealable. For I am the Lord, Jeremiah 32 and 7, and nothing is too difficult for me. Can you say amen? And Paul says to the 276 men on the ship, you got to love this, be bold. And this is you and I 
in your workplace this week. This is you and I in our family this week. He says, hey, it's time for you to eat. He says, no harm's going to come for you. He says, this is for your survival and for you to thrive. The reason we want to push you into the word and push you into the presence of God, it's for your survival. And there he praised God and gave glory because that's what you do when you're in the grip of a gale. You say, God is still good. Donna, you've been saying that these eight weeks you've been healed. God, you are still good. I give you thanks and I give you praise that you've got it all in control. And so I'm going to glorify you. I'm going to eat and drink and be merry with joy for the Lord is on my side can you stand up and give him the best praise I'm almost done just stand up and keep standing hallelujah I'm going to get some people to help me and I'm done and we're going to worship in the altar and they all ate this is what I want you to get the pattern Christ sustains Paul Christ strengthens Paul and then he strengthens others in the grip of a gale. So what I want to say to you, Christ strengthens you this morning, but then he wants you to go take the bread and give it to others. Sherry, come help me. You see, Christ, let's just stay right here. Christ, we're not going to eat this bread, so don't worry. Well, she brought food, and the least said not to bring food in the sanctuary. I'm good with the owners, trust me. Then Sherry has that bread. Misty, come help me. Right here. Misty gets bread from him this morning. He strengthens her first, and then she takes it to others. This is the way the Lord sustains you. Steve Witt, come help me. He sustains you. Maybe it's through a song. Maybe it's through a word. Just take your place up there anywhere. And he sustains you. You good? He sustains you, Donna. And he strengthens you. Mr. George, would you help me? Thank you. Give George a hand. He's a new one. Come on up. You mind come on up? Thank you, Mr. George. He's a brother of a dear friend of mine. Do you just stand right there, Mr. George? He strengthens you. Sometimes it may be just through a good night's sleep. Sometimes it just may be through laughter, right? You just all of a sudden laugh. Mr. Dale, will you come help me? Yeah, come help me. He strengthens Mr. Dale. And go up there and take your place, sir. Thank you so much. And then through that, he strengthens others and breaks bread with them. So then what they do is, and I'll stop right there because you all say, hey, am I next? I'm going to go out the back door right now. He strengthens you. You begin to give that bread to others this week. You begin to take it to your workplace, to your home place. My new brother, would you come join me, Anthony? Give Anthony a hand. <laughs> Just stand right up there. He gives bread. He strengthens us this morning through worship, through the word, through the anointing, through the worship we're fixing to do. And then he wants you to take it to others. The ship ran aground, and we'll get to the next part next week. But in the grip of a gale, the words held true. I know in whom I have believed in. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed. What do you need to commit to him today? What do you need to cut the rope on today? So much word that's gone forth, but how does it apply to you? What is Holy Spirit saying to you this morning as they move this pulpit? I'm going to ask all of you up here just to go out there and hand your bread to someone. If you know them or don't, and then take your seat. Would you give them a hand for helping me? You see, we are strengthened, and then we take it and strengthen others. The Lord is calling you to do that. As every eye is closed this morning, every head is bowed just for a moment this morning. Just for a moment. If you're here this morning and you're away from Jesus Christ and you think, I want to know him like that. I want to know the one whose value is far greater than anyone. I want to come home to him. I'm not going to embarrass you or call you up. We're going to worship these last few moments. But if you want to repeat a prayer with everyone in this room and make things right with Christ again, would you lift your hand right where you are? Would you lift your hand right where you are? God bless you. God bless you. Any others? Just want to come home to him. God bless you. God sees you and God knows you. 
Would everyone repeat this prayer with me? Dear Jesus, I'm coming back to you today. I confess I'm a sinner. And I confess that you are Lord. Make today the best day of the rest of my life. I'm coming home to you today in Jesus' name. Can we give all of them a hand clap of God bless you? Amen. Brother Mike is going to lead us in worship. I just want you to come. We want to pray. First of all, I want to pray for some people. I want people to come first. We're going to come in a little bit of an order. You're in the grip of a gale right now, and you need God to do something. Would you come and stand first? We're all coming. Would you come and stand first? Would you give them a hand as they come this morning? You're in that grip of a gale, and you need God to do something. Come on. You're okay. Just keep clapping. They're coming. You need God to do something. Come on. They're coming. Just keep blessing them, encouraging them, strengthening them, strengthening them, strengthening them, strengthening them, strengthening them. They need God to do some things for them, to move some things, to restore some things, to shift some things. This is their moment. Now, I want to say, you in this room, that you have survived these things, you come next and stand behind them. Would you come now, prayer warriors, leaders, just anyone that you feel you want to come pray. Come stand behind one of these people. If you're here to get prayer, stay on the wooden part. That way we know what's needed. Come on, just do that. Now, I'm going to ask all of you. The Lord is asking you to commit some things to him. And cut the rope. I could have done a cut the rope altar call, but I'm having mercy on you. So if you need to cut some things, make that right with the Lord. Everyone that will, just move up. Don't be afraid of me. I'm not going to do anything. Just move on up. We're going to worship and we're going to pray with each other. Or if you're staying where you are, make your place a place of worship. Brother Mike, lead us in some worship here in these closing moments. In these closing moments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is who you are. Hallelujah. Now just praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Now let me say this. Your testimony as you leave today is, I know whom I have believed in. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that, to preserve that, which I've committed him. If it's souls, if it's the salvation of your children, if it's the healing of your body, if it's financial situation, you're saying, I know that he's able. Before we go, Pastor Tim, for our dismiss you, Pastor Tim, Pastor Barb, go stand with Pastor Jeff. I want you to point your hands and just pray for God's glory to just be poured out on Pastor Jeff and his church. Come on, just point your hands that way and begin to speak, Lord. Let your glory be seen, Lord. Let your glory be seen. Let prodigals come home to you. Strengthen Pastor Jeff. Strengthen him when he feels weary. Strengthen him when he wants to give up. Strengthen him in the victory. Strengthen him in the battle. Strengthen him with vision, Lord. Let his feet be planted like a rock, Lord. Let him fulfill your commission and your purpose. Right there, Lord, in Zion, Illinois, we pray for an outpouring in the name of Jesus. Somebody praise him.